actually a, a friend of mine um, just told me that uh, Alan of Burning Sky Records was putting together this tribute and I got I got I don't know when I did it I, I, I guess it was before Christmas uh, I don't know and and um, and I just had to be part of it. I, I wrote Alan and I said, "Look, man, I'm a huge, huge Jellyfish fan, and I just, I just think I could, I could really cover their stuff well." You know, and I'm pretty glad that I, I got to know so early because it's, it seems like it seemed like as soon as I found out about it, you know, shortly after that, everybody found out about it and it blew up, and all these bands wanted to do these tracks, and, and I'm lucky because I, I got in there early. Well, you know, after talking about all the Zeppelin and Queen and, and, and Beatles and all of their albums that were let in, like not necessarily the most quintessential as far as hit go and, and, and commercially, I always dig doing songs both in the studio and live that aren't the obvious ones. First of all, like I, I'm kind of a B-sides guy, and, and too much, too little, too late always was a favorite. It's just a really good, well-crafted pop tune. And, uh, and I thought I could probably do it. Of all of, of all the songs, I thought that I identified with it, I guess, musically. So I thought I could probably pull it off. <laughs> That's a big one because it's no small feat to try to cover these guys' music. And then so many, so much interest it generated uh, after that point. And at, at some point, so many bands were involved, and of course they want to make the record as good as possible. So they they did open it up and let other bands. You know, more than one band doing different tracks, make sure they got really good performances and stuff. Because you know, I mean, it's it's a big deal to put together a thing of this scope. And what if one of the bands doesn't do such a great job on a song or whatever? I could totally understand it, but it also put the heat on hugely. I was like, I went from thinking that I was, you know, I had it and it was all good to like, oh my god, now I got to make sure I really do it good, <laughs> right? And uh, and so that that edge, I think, made me, you know. Do it even better, you know, because I, I really had to make sure I had full my full game handling, right? Make sure that I just you know dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. You know? so, well, I you know I didn't have a chance to work on it all at one time, so I did it kind of when I had time to do it. But I I think I uh, I started probably in October, maybe end of September. And, and I didn't get the track of 2006, and then didn't hand in the track until February 2007, the end of February. And it took a lot of hours. Uh, it took me, I don't, I don't know, I, I would guess that it took me between 30 and 40 hours, maybe. I, I'm just totally a guess, but, but it took a lot of time because I, well, I played everything on it. So, I mean, instead of, you know, conventionally most bands would have each guy do their part, but I had to learn it all. And I really wanted to do it justice, so I learned it all, you know, as best I could and, and, uh, and, and just tried to do perfection. You know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of a perfectionist guy, so it took me a long time. Um, well, I played everything. I, I played every instrument, everything you hear on there is me. Uh, I considered getting some people in to help me do background vocals and stuff, but just decided to just do it all myself. But I, I, uh, I, I generally, I mean, I have a pretty standard way of doing it, just like they would do it at any studio. I like start with the rhythm instruments and drums, and I, and I did all that via MIDI and doing samples and stuff, because I, you know, I did it all here in my studio in my house, and so I didn't have a drum kit here. But uh, I kind of feel like a, my specialty is making program drums sound real. So, uh, in a perfect scenario, I'd love to mic up a beautiful drum kit in a beautiful room, but you know, these days, we've got our home studios, and so we've just got to do what we can do. No apologies, right? Uh, then I go and, you know, I do all the instruments, you know, the rhythm instruments. I think I laid down, like, a, a keys, like a piano track of it first, because I had considered, instead of... Instead of doing the, the, the original arrangement of the guitars, I considered doing piano on the, on the first verse, or during the verse of piano and bass instead of 
guitar, but so much of that that track is that cool, jangly guitar. And, and I thought, nah. You know, because I was I was really fighting with it at the beginning, whether or not I would you know change it up or 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 do it like the original. So anyway, that would just turn out to be a guy track. Went did the Wurlitzer and some stuff, laid down the bass line, uh, tried a few different guitars. I ended up borrowing guitars and things like that. And I think the the, the the finished up like the final product. I was using a an old Rickenbacker through that old Fender amp. And uh, and then you know I did a you know. You always lay down just like a scratch vocal track, just to like have a guideline of stuff. And then I went in and did all the vocals. And, uh, I don't know. I think probably at the end I had used about 30, six tracks or something when I was done. Um, I had to bounce some stuff here and there, but I mean there's something like 16 tracks just of the background vocals and, and layering all the harmonies. And that that's the fun part actually. You know, getting the groove and all that stuff down is fun as well, but it's a little more labor intensive. And then putting the icing on all the all the vocals and and making sure you got that that perfect vocal that was uh, that was tough, of course. You just want to capture the feel of the tune. But yeah, and then uh, and then you know some tweaking here and there, and then and then and then mixing it. And I think I mixed it probably about <laughs> I probably mixed it about ten different times because. You know, I mean, you just want to get it perfect, right? And uh, sent it off and crossed my fingers and went, okay. I hope Alan and, and, and them like it, and and, uh, and they did. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it was it was generally speaking the, the same as a normal studio session, except you know, I play wore all the hats on the recorder. Well, it's a huge honor. Um, it means that I have reached a level where I can actually, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say that I could write like them necessarily, but at least, at least uh, get the magic of what they were doing out in the first place. Um, I was thrilled to do the record because they just totally raised the bar for me as far as live performance. I saw them live a couple times and they did everything so perfectly. I mean, I just, you know, it's, we're so quintessential for me as a as a as a live band, as a recording band, as a, a band. Uh, I don't know. They just seem to have it all together. And, and if I could, I was a little, you know, freaked out to do one of these songs because I was like, I don't know if I could pull this off. You know, like I loved them for 15 years, and it probably took me the 15 years that I <laughs> that I loved them for. Be ready enough to actually try to, you know, attempt the feat of doing one of their tracks, and uh, and it worked out. You know, I, I wasn't sure at first. I was like, well, here we go. You know, I gonna, can't pee on a Picasso, right? What are you gonna do? And so, and so, I, you know, I hope everybody likes it. I, I think I did a pretty good job, you know, capturing the 